mention one thing. I'm a sculptor, not, not an engineer. But I, in my whole life, I always like to tinker and, and get some ideas out. And sometimes I do it a little bit and then trash it. And again, some new idea coming. So I, I, I'm keeping myself busy beside my sculpture work. So, Narendraji, can you explain what we are looking at up here? I think it's a model, working model for harnessing wave energy. Mm -hmm. And this is how it, might, it will work. Is here's a block of wood here, mm -hmm. hinge here. So when if wave comes from this side, it can lift it up because the floating action so it will go up and wave. We receive then, then it falls, and then another wave comes in, and so it can continuously going. The wheel will be going in one direction. My both the actions lifting and, and falling. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm understanding it correctly. As the waves come and hit the drum, the drum goes up with the wave going up, and when the wave recedes, the drum comes down. This repetitive motion, we can harness electricity or wave energy out of this. Out of this wheel turning, right. we can hook it up on any, any sort of generator sort of or, generator. correct, yeah. And yeah. then the, the innovative part of this design is that as your drum is moving up and down, the wheel is always moving in the same direction, in the same direction. So the generator and creation of power is happening yes. continuously in the same direction without wasting any electricity. And uh, this is a prototype model. Um, so essentially it's just demonstrating the principle, principle. of wave energy. It's not any reference to uh, the scale. It could be made in a bigger size, yes. materials yeah. could and be different. Go back to now, go to the engineering process now this next stage is define engineering and uh, and take the basic idea and then then make it make it more efficient in my mind is a uh, ocean is a solar battery fully charged all the time 24 hours every every day Right. So, Narendraji, how does this wheel work? How did you make it happen that it goes in the same direction? See, each wheel has a, has a cranking device, so it can only go one way. It engages, the other way it just free, turning free. So it's almost like a ratchet. Ratchet. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. And this ball is, is is hooked on the top. And this boy is hooked in, on the bottom, so it, it can give same reaction. Right. And, and these rubber pieces that I'm seeing, these ones, they are making sure that they're holding it, the pressure. It gives, it gives the right friction. Uh, against the wheel. Against the wheel, so it, it would not slip, but it would turn. Right. And that's my just simple solution, but then engineering it can be improvised it further. It even can be made into a gear system or anything can be made more more efficient and more. But here in this case, is I use everything more which would not rust with the water. So try to, to avoid metal or steel. Mm -hmm. Only steel parts are here which is be away from water. Mm -hmm. So that the idea is to just take it to men can hold it on both sides and go in the water level of the, over Lake Michigan. I see. So this summer you are planning to take it for a test, this yeah. prototype for a test, and see how it yeah, actually... Yeah, it, it, it just weather gets better. Right. Yeah. To just to check how effectively it works and if you can improvise yourself on this idea yeah. first, before it goes to the next level of sophisticated engineering. 
So, well, thank you very much, Narendra Ji, for sharing your invention with us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, put together a team of students that uh, will take his you know, initial design, his initial prototype that is uh, in front of us, um, and uh, try to redesign it and maybe try to make it a little bit more efficient uh, and also use um, uh, conventional technologies rather than wood, something more robust, more uh, uh, manufacturable. Also with a little bit of spin towards uh, being able to manufacture uh, very cheaply in the third world countries. Huh? So we use PVC pipes and things like that. And the, the student team enrolled in a class, uh, a product realization class, which I teach, and um, they have the entire semester to take uh, an idea and make a working prototype uh, and then test it. So that was the beginning of the, of the journey. small villages, places where they don't have a grid, um, something like we're talking about here, maybe a, a, a giant ship parked offshore wouldn't work, but maybe 20 or 30 of these yeah. might. Um, I mean, it seems like it's very adaptable. Yeah, but there's definitely a, a potential for scalability. Uh, uh, that's why I like this idea a lot, that you can either make it uh, uh, power a village, or maybe even power one house, mm -hmm. or you can make it power an uh, entire town. If you Is a, a waves coming in, 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 in 
a bit more power and the side is totally quiet so it can be housed on the uh, on the hardware wall and link them all together with the with the with the one one shaft or or all um, machine can be generating individual power and then it can be connected to electricity. So you don't know yet but the engineering um, people can, can decide which one is more more feasible economical. So you're talking about this sort of a, this, this sort of an item but a, a roll of them maybe hundreds or or, yeah. or more along a seawall or along a breakwater of some kind. And then either we can this shaft can be connected with one one to the other to the other and create a whole uh, machine linked together, mechanically linked together. Or as I said mentioned that each one can generate its own electricity and then collectively they can go out, out on the land. So that is the issue as to be I don't know. That's where the engineers come in. Yeah. How to do that. Coastal uh, energy becomes more and more uh, a player in the 